My wife recently got into paint by numbers as a relaxing hobby, so naturally my first thought was, hey, I bet I could write a shader for this. I created a little UI that lets you provide an image, select a paint palette size, and a maximum number of segments to determine the difficulty. This UI certainly isn't going to win any awards, but it'll do for this experiment. Now it's time to get cracking on the algorithm. I think it makes sense to break this down into two stages, the color palette selection and segmenting regions to paint. I have an idea for how to handle the palette, so we'll start there. The goal is to take any image with any number of colors and condense it down to a palette size that accurately reflects the image. So how do we do that? The first thing that comes to mind is k-means clustering. The formal definition might be a little intimidating, but it's a really simple and versatile algorithm designed to take any data points, in this case pixel colors, and partition them into k clusters. The algorithm works by randomly selecting k data points to start as the center of the clusters, and we then assign each data point to its nearest cluster, recalculate the cluster centers, and repeat this process over and over and over. We can finally stop when either every data point stays in the same cluster, the center of the clusters stay in the same position, or we reach some arbitrary number of maximum iterations. This makes complete sense on a 2D grid, so how do we apply this to the pixels of an image? Thankfully, the algorithm scales to any number of dimensions, so if we consider a pixel to be a three-dimensional value containing RGB components, then it works just fine. To start with, I'm creating a compute shader in Unity and just rendering back the image to make sure everything's set up correctly and... Oops, nope, something's going wrong, no worries. Oh, nope, that's not right, hang on. Ah, there we go. All right, let's initialize the clusters by selecting K random pixels from the image. This results in an array filled with our palette of however many colors you want, selected randomly from the image, but we obviously don't want it to be random, we want the most common colors from the image, so a second compute shader runs for each pixel and simply calculates the nearest cluster by measuring the Euclidean distance between the cluster color and the current pixel color. Finally, a third compute shader updates the cluster centers, or rather our palette colors, by taking the mean color of each pixel in the cluster. This is really slow. We have to iterate over every single pixel in the image, check if it's assigned to this cluster, and if so, sample it. Here are a few ideas for how you could more efficiently run k-means on the GPU, but I don't want to overcomplicate this little experiment, so I've kept it quite simple. Now on the C-sharp side, we can dispatch our compute shaders to initialize the clusters, assign each pixel to the nearest cluster, update the cluster centers, and repeat until convergence. To calculate convergence, I am unfortunately copying quite a bit of data back from the GPU, which is not ideal. We copy back the cluster centers in the cluster index assignment for every single pixel, and check if any of them changed from the previous iteration. If none of them changed, we consider the algorithm to have converged, and I also put in a safety mechanism to ensure this doesn't end up running forever, with a hard stop on the number of iterations it can run. All right, let's have a look at the algorithm in action. Here I'm visualizing the color of the cluster assigned to each pixel, and we can see each iteration of the k-means clustering that the pixels are being reassigned to the appropriate cluster, and the color of each cluster is updated to better reflect the pixels within it. The more colors we allow it to choose, the more closely it's going to resemble the original image, and the less we allow, the more stylized and abstract it becomes. Pretty neat. I've added a little color palette display on the side so we can better see the colors it selects, sorted by luminance, which is calculated like so. Even though we want 20 colors, it's hardly able to find them in this image, so we end up with a lot of nearly identical colors. This monochromatic image is even worse because it's, well, monochromatic. To fix this, I added a filter step to remove colors that are too similar, and we can see we now start to get a much cleaner palette. One issue I'm finding is it does tend to wash out the colors, with the original image always being much more vibrant than the colors we're picking. I'd like to find a way to correct for this, and a little bit of research led me down the rabbit hole of the C-Lab color space, which is designed so that numeric differences between colors more accurately represent the perceived difference in the colors as we see them, compared to something like RGB or HSV. The formula for conversion to C-Lab is somewhat complex, and it also involves an intermediary color space in XYZ, but thankfully I found many conversion utilities exist on Shader Toy and GitHub already. I didn't realize it at the time, but this decision to use an off-the-shelf library is going to cost me, but more on that later. Now it's easy enough to convert our RGB pixel and cluster colors from RGB to C-Lab space. However, there is one wrinkle, as it turns out that measuring the difference between two C-Lab colors is another rabbit hole of its own. The difference between two C-Lab colors is known as Delta E, apparently named by the International Commission of Illumination, which is kind of a really cool name. The Commission of Illumination seems to have a hard time deciding how to measure the difference though, as there are many formulas for calculating Delta E. The 1976 definition is a simple Euclidean distance check, exactly as we're already comparing colors in RGB space, so let's see how that stacks up against the RGB version. It does indeed seem to result in different colors. I'm not actually sure they're much more representative of the original image though. They did replace this Delta E formula, so let's try out the 1994 version. Unfortunately, there is no simple HLSL function for the 94 version, so it's going to take a little bit more effort to implement this, and I'm afraid it doesn't really make a difference. There are more formulas to try, but I'm starting to think there might be another problem. I got to thinking that the issue must be in the cluster center update, where we're taking the mean pixel color of all the pixels in the cluster, 
I tried playing with variables like hue, luminance, and saturation here, but the results were less than helpful. I don't want to get too hung up on this right now because there's a lot of other work to do, but I promise we will come back and solve this issue. If only someone had warned us that colors could be so tricky. Now we have our color palette selected, even if it's not ideal yet, so it's time to start slicing the image into paintable segments. I need to do some research on this though, so while I do, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Codex. Codex is created for game devs by game devs. They've worked on games you know, like Spec Ops The Line, Dead Island 2, and Curious Expedition, and they've taken everything they've learned about running video game productions and put it into one tool. They came up with a really playful interface inspired by trading card games, and I quite like the onboarding process. It's completely gamified with you earning XP as you complete onboarding tasks like setting up hands and creating your first cards. Closing a ticket is always a great feeling, but Codex makes it much more satisfying. It's been really painless moving my backlog over to Codex, and I've split Feral North into bugs and core development decks so I can easily organize my work with additional decks for music, animation, and voice acting so I can make sure my collaborators are never blocked waiting on me and I can get a nice overview of where we're at. Cards support Markdown, which is a big thing for me. I love creating little checklists as I brainstorm each task so I can make sure I never miss anything. Codex is the only project management tool that invites your audience to participate so you can make better games with your community. Makes it easy to collect feedback from your Discord audience via an in-game reporting interface for both Unity and Unreal, or by sharing your public roadmap with their open decks feature. Thank you so much to Codex for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out at codex.io slash Kyle. Okay, right, where were we? Ah yes, region segmentation. So I had to play in GIMP to see how we could approach this, and I think I found a technique that could work. If we iterate between the water pixels filter and a Gaussian blur, we end up with a nice painterly effect with colors segmented into distinct regions. I believe we could repeat this process until we get down to the desired number of segments, and then assign each segment to their nearest color from the palette. So let's find out, shall we? The Gaussian Blur is very straightforward, but I'm not sure how the water pixels effect works. GIMP's open source, so I thought I might get lucky having a nose through the source code, but I ended up turning up empty there. I did some research and found it's based on a super pixels algorithm called Simple Linear Iterative Clustering. Simple Linear Iterative Clustering. Why can't I say that? Simple Linear Iterative Clustering. This one's new to me, but it actually doesn't seem terribly different to the k-means clustering we're already doing. The only major difference being we need to account for space within the image, not just color. Meaning two pixels can only be in the same cluster if they're in close proximity to one another and a similar color. Whereas previously we only cared about color. Aside from that, the process is virtually identical. We start with another cluster initialization compute shader, and then assign each pixel to the nearest super pixel based again on the C-Lab colors, but this time also incorporating proximity in the image. And we can weigh the importance of color versus proximity with this variable here. After the first iteration, we can see it's starting to form superpixels that are approximately evenly spaced. But of course we don't want them evenly spaced, we want them to form shapes from the colors within the image, so we iterate on this over and over, just like with k-means clustering. Here I'm visualizing the superpixel colors, and it seems to be inventing colors out of nowhere. The other issue is that it gives us one unique color per superpixel, regardless of how many colors the user selects, so we need to combine the two algorithms to be able to select the size of our palette and the number of segments. This did get me thinking though, so I experimented with selecting our color palette by running k-means clustering on the result of the superpixels algorithm. Unfortunately the results were not great. Again it seems to be inventing colors that don't exist in the original image, but it was quite interesting to watch the visualization of the algorithm as it worked on this new image format. Okay so we have a color palette, and we have the image broken into segments, we now need to bring this all together and create our paint by numbers canvas. We'll need to draw borders around the segments so we know where to paint, so let's start with that. Since we have each pixel assigned to a super pixel, I think we can detect borders as being any place where a neighboring pixel is assigned to a different super pixel. If we create another compute pass with this logic, outputting white for borders, we end up with the following, and it seems to work. But there is a problem. We have way too many super pixels, what happened to our super pixel limit? Ah, of course, we forgot the blur. In GIMP, I was running a Gaussian blur to help smooth out the noise in the image to generate clean, paintable segments. But we haven't done that, so we're left with a lot of tiny little super pixels, each containing just a few pixels. I did a very naive, simple blur by averaging the pixel color with its neighbors before each super pixel iteration, and as you can see, before we had all these tiny little islands, but if I run it again with the blur enabled, they're mostly gone. We do still get a few here and there, but my wife assures me this is well within paint by numbers regulations, so I'm satisfied. Alright, we have our color palette from the k-means clustering and our segments from the super pixels. Let's finally bring this all together. If you run through each superpixel and assign it to the nearest color from our palette, and we then change the border logic to instead draw a border when the neighboring pixel is assigned to a different palette color, we effectively merge neighboring superpixels that end up being the same palette color and voila. Oh wait, nope, this looks terrible, hmm. There's definitely something wrong with our colors. Every step of the way we've had issues with the color selection, so what is going on? C-Lab was supposed to solve this. 
I've been digging into the K-means color selection, our SuperPixels algorithm, trying all kinds of things like downscaling, textures, moving the blur pass around, experimenting with hue, luminance, and saturation to improve color selection, but nothing's working. And then I finally had a look inside that color space utility that's responsible for the C-Lab conversion. Remember how I grabbed this off GitHub without much thought? That might have been a mistake. There's actually nothing wrong with the script, this is entirely my fault. Internally it has a pass to convert the incoming sRGB texture to linear color space before going to XYZ and eventually C-Lab. The thing is, we're already passing in a linear space texture, so that sRGB to linear conversion is completely messing the colors up. That's why the SuperPixels pass seems to hallucinate completely new colors into existence. Simply removing that step finally gives us SuperPixels that actually resemble the original image, and in fact they so closely resemble the original image, let's return to that idea of running k-means on the SuperPixel texture for our palette selection. This actually works really nicely now, and it opens the door for a significant optimization. If we're selecting our palette from the SuperPixels, and we know that every pixel within the SuperPixel is assigned to the same color, then there's really no need to run our k-means clustering on every individual pixel, we can instead just run it on each SuperPixel, drastically reducing the amount of work from 2 million pixels in a 1920 by 1080 image, down to a few hundred or maybe a few thousand super pixels, depending on the complexity input. We don't even need to change our compute shader, we can just generate a new texture with one pixel per super pixel, which looks like so. Of course it's tiny, but that's the whole point. And we use that as the input to our k-means clustering, instead of the original image. Now the palette selection stage converges virtually instantly, cutting our whole processing time in half, and we're left with a nice, vibrant palette representative of the original image. I quite enjoy the effect with low complexity and a large color palette, it's just immensely satisfying watching the SuperPixels algorithm carve out the more prominent shapes. Now we can add a color picker to swap out the colors, and we have our little paint by numbers generator. I am being told that you usually start with a blank canvas though, so I need a button to clear your palette and start from scratch if you choose. Okay, I'm also being told that the other criteria for paint by numbers is, well, numbers. I couldn't actually think of an efficient way to generate the labels for our SuperPixels after merging them with the borders, and adding a label to each pre-merged SuperPixel was a little bit ridiculous. So instead, I just highlight the segments as you hover over the color palette so you know which region you're working with. I'm worried paint by numbers purists may not appreciate this digital modification, but I think it's okay. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to all my patrons who voted on this video topic, with a special mention to those in the Magpie tier, and my Ospreys Elegon, Purple Sloth Studio, and Jason Hansen. All patrons get to vote on the video topics, and I've shared the source code for this project to all patrons as well. Feel free to check that out if you're interested, but in any case, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.